Good evening everyone, time for another member update. Let's start out with the silver chart. This is the one hour chart. And you can see that we're just testing that $18 price here. We just ticked above it just a few seconds ago. And I've drawn in a number of things here. The most recent trend line, the MACD, and then the volume. So starting off with the trend line here, you can see that the trend that has been in place since about the beginning of this month is uh, holding. Um, you can see that with the Brexit vote, we had a fake out. I've covered those often before. Uh, these technical patterns are things that traders watch. You often get a head fake before a news driven event. Uh, that's to clear out the stops and take it the other way. And obviously, the people who had sell stops in between about $17 and $17.50 or so, or maybe $17.25 actually, they were taken out. They didn't get to ride it up. Um, so you can see the test there of the trend line, and uh, it bounced off it and is now heading up. Uh, that coincides with a MACD bottom buy signal on the MACD. There are three major buy signals on the MACD that we have in this chart. The first one is the initial takeoff and you can see that's the most valid one. We had another MACD buy signal after this sell signal and we got sideways movement out of that one. Uh, then we just kind of went sideways until we got this Brexit thing which the sell-off from that spike up to 1833 brought us back down below the zero line and now we have this buy signal. This buy signal is looking fairly strong. We can see that on the volume, we have decent volume coming in right there when, it, when the uh, buy signal crossed. And now we've got decent follow-up volume for after hours on this spike. So we're trying to make it through 18. Um, as far as the chart longer term goes, I've pointed out the congestion that we have. We have to go out to the daily to get to that. But the congestion here starts really at around 1850 or so. Uh, that's a price we touched, uh, 1840 I would say. That's a price we touched in the beginning of 2015 and then fell from there. Uh, we're trying to get above this high. We, we've gotten above it and now we're trying to kind of resume the move. Um, the MACD on some of these is overbought. So if we go to say the 10 minutes, you can see that we're looking at kind of an overbought uh, MACD. But at the same time, you can see how overbought it was compared to where it is now. Uh, nothing serious. So it can definitely move much higher. Uh, the fact that it's trying to test where it where it uh, ran to during this Brexit fake out rally, uh, that's a very bullish sign. So uh, it looks like the bull trend is continuing. Taking out to the monthly, you can see that uh, the MACD is still trying to reach the zero line. And I think the crossover of that zero line is going to coincide with probably a major move up. But it's still quite a ways away. Let's pull up the Bitcoin chart here. Now, I had predicted that we were probably going to get back into near the top of the pennant breakout. Uh, we kind of really only went to this pennant area, had a very short-lived uh, penetration, which gave us an interesting candle spike there, and then we went right back up. So it, it's still trying to form a top, complete that top, it hasn't really done a full retracement yet, I don't believe. Now, interesting to point out on this chart is the volume. Uh, now, the volume is going to be different if you're looking at Bitfinex, Bitstamp, Huobi, BTC, etc. This is the Bitstamp volume chart. And this one's very telling for me because you can see that after we had that low, that intermediate low below $200, then we had continuous buying and a sideways move as it began to ramp up and then we have the huge buying spike. Now after that occurred we had a sell-off 
and and then a rally but you can see that the volume just kind of died as the pennant formed now once the pennant started to break out you can see the buying volume came in with these little green spikes but it's nothing like the volume that we had back in here with, with the initial breakout so what does that mean well I think it means that most of these buyers are not dumping uh, there was some profit taking definitely at this 778 top but you can see there's really only one red uh, volume spike there and that's rivaled by some green ones right after it but none of these volume spikes are anything like what we had here in the continuous buying on the run-up and then the massive spike so for the most part those people are all still long we're gonna have to see a lot more volume coming in to indicate that a significant number are selling right now it's just looking like profit taking now the Chinese chart is not as definitive as that but shows some interesting buying happening all the way through the pennant then again not very much buying to get us out of it and uh, not very much selling on this top so what does that mean well I don't think that the uh, correction is is over yet but I think it's close to being over and of course on the longest term uh, we have still a ways to go if we're going to challenge that old high we're still only about 60 percent of the way now let's pull up uh, let's start off with the um, Dow utilities uh, this is just an absolutely bizarre chart we're going to be looking at interest rates now but I've explained before when I've done the Dow utilities how how and why the utilities operate as a proxy for interest rates now you can see these are these these are weekly candlesticks and actually no I'm sorry these are monthly candlesticks but uh, you can see that the last candlestick that we have here is this spike closing on the high right there you can see close actually high six nine nine four five close six nine nine four five so the Dow utilities actually spiked up and closed right below 700 and you can see how dramatic on the chart that is so what does that mean well it means that interest rates are headed down and uh, if we look at uh, on the 30-year Treasury bonds it's going to be the most dramatic you can see there we go there we have another spike we're rolling into another parabolic spike up in the bonds it's not quite the same when we move in on the yield curve you can see the 10-year has not made a new high and uh, as we approach the uh, shorter dated or shorter maturities then it becomes weaker so that uh, indicates that there's still a little bit of a tightening bias but that's rapidly fading and you can see it here on the three-month t-bill or actually euro dollars but it's equivalent of the t-bills um, you can see that it's actually after that very very long period you can see rates went to virtually nothing on the short term at the financial crisis by mid 2009 they were around zero and they continued until the first rate hike we had but now you can see they're starting to rally again in price or rates starting to drop what does this all mean well let's look at this zero hedge article on interest rates and in light of what happened with brexit uh, you can see Peter Schiff has mentioned in his most recent video that this is exactly what the Federal Reserve was looking for an excuse to not raise rates and looking at this information it looks like uh, the next move is actually going to be a rate cut if that's even believable so here's the article forget hikes rate cut odds soar for September as NERP bets hit record high Despite a modest bounce today, the collapse in stock prices and bond yields since the non-event 
won't affect our market Brexit vote has sent market implied rate hike odds careening lower. In fact, there is now a 0% chance of a rate hike to November and a 23% chance of a rate cut in September with December post-election rate hike odds just 7.7%. Fed credibility is officially dead. Fed rate movement expectations have collapsed, and here's the chart on the rate hike odds. With a stunning 23% chance of a rate cut now in September. And market bets per euro dollar call, call open interest on NERP in 2017 are soaring to record highs. So people are betting that the next move is going to be down. Uh, the Fed has never really had any credibility and now it's just kind of coming to light that they're completely trapped. Uh, so I wanted to show you real quick the Australian dollar gold chart. Uh, let's uh, see if I can find the silver. I think they have that actually with just the precious metal area. Let's see if they have that here silver spot Australian dollar. So let's start with the silver spot in Australian dollars. And you can see that uh, in Australian dollars, the silver is still down 50% um, in price. That is absolutely incredible. When you look at the chart for gold in Australian dollars, as one of the members pointed out, actually went into a new high. You can see that right there. 1850. That's a new print uh, high all time in Australian dollars. So again, the story of the currencies weakening across the globe one by one here and there, it's happening. It hasn't happened in America yet, but you can see it's starting to happen in Australia. So I want to show you the debt to the penny chart real quick here and then we're going to talk about some silver. Um, the debt to the penny is, and keep this in mind that we're looking at interest rates going down further, uh, but the debt to the penny stays at that uh, high that it hits, um, has been for the last few years, hits a, a number in the spring and then stays there for some time, you can see last year it, on June 26th, we had 18,152, and that lasted all the way into that uh, October time frame after the fiscal year. Now, a similar pattern is developing this year, except you can see that it's inching higher. So we got that spike up uh, over the $19 trillion mark uh, at the 19.2, that was around March. And then it just kind of stayed the same, but you can see now it's starting to creep up to where we're now at the the highest we've ever seen. I believe this is the highest we've ever seen. Um, no, actually, there's the highest. 19,234. Uh, no, 279. That's, that's going to be the highest. I might have missed one here. So we're at the highest national debt number we've seen. And you can see that 19,279 and subtract exactly one year ago, uh, that's a $1.1 trillion deficit. We're running a $1.1 trillion yearly deficit in the face of collapsing interest rates. So I think when you put that all together, the Dow Utilities doing what it's doing interest rates doing what they're doing, it really appears from the charts that we're getting very, very close to some type of just blow off top reversal type of situation. Um, ultimately, a parabolic move like the one that we have here in the utilities. You can see in the past, that it did take some time, but at the top around the turn of the century or at the top in utilities at the financial crisis, 
you can see that it does turn and it moves dramatically. So that is coming, uh, and unless you know things just go straight up and flatline, that's even worse. Uh, I don't even know what that would mean, but uh, a dramatic reversal, I think, is coming in interest rates. Everything's pointing to it. Um, they're trying to take things negative, and how far can they go? So let's uh, jump over to the silver. Now, I went and did a review of my four favorites, which are Atmex, Gainesville Coins, uh, JM Bullion, and Provident Metals. Provident Metals is really the or actually, I'm sorry, JM Bullion is really the only one right now that has anything I like, which is going to be the half ounce monkey at 1329. I actually have some Bitcoin profits that I made the other day from selling some Florin coin and flipping some other coins, and I made maybe three or four Bitcoins. I'm actually thinking about uh, buying some of these half ounce monkey coins. You can see that they do accept Bitcoin as actually the check and wire price, which is fantastic. I did 200 here, but you can see if you do as many as possible, they actually have 3,600 in stock. So this is definitely going to be my pick. Um, the, the volume and the availability of these Lunar Series this year is the worst I've ever seen it. They have virtually nothing on Atmex. They have virtually nothing at Gainesville. They have virtually nothing at Provident. The best price on these monkeys, $13.29. If you have some Bitcoins that you can spend right now, that's probably a great deal. So um, back to the silver chart, we're pushing that $18 price. Uh, that's really important because although it has an area to test here that's between 18 and even 24, uh, we need to get into this next area to try to sort out what we're going to do when we get into all this overhead resistance. We also have this very, very old price spike uh, from 2008 with the Bear Stearns collapse, and that's absolutely amazing that we're actually below that price. So you can see we're now above $18. The market looks strong. It wants to go higher. We'll wait and see if we get some kind of smackdown. Uh, that's the typical thing. But again, we had the Brexit fake out, then huge rally, and now we're starting to move into those prices and, and consolidate up in that higher range. So could it be a dramatic move tonight. Actually could move above this 1830 price as there's really not a lot of overhead resistance between here and about 1850. And we'll talk to you next time.